Fabulous. Sababa. Which means awesome. Love. Love of God. Phenomenal. 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 Well, Israel, you know, <laughs> it's like they've lost the Bible again. But in another way, they have Bible quizzes. They teach the Bible in high school over there. They talk about it. But when you try to witness to them about, you know, real scripture, well, the New Testament and so on, they don't want to hear it. Or they read it and say, well, that's for you folks. And it, it, in some ways, it almost feels like they've lost the Bible as they did in Josiah's time. But they do hold Passover and they hold Yom Kippur and they uh, they go to the wall. And all of this is to be seen by Christian people, if you can get there. There's nothing I, I recommend more than a trip to Israel because, well, it just it covers for 30 years of Sunday school. I mean, people are utterly bowled over when they see what's there. I'm not going to be taking the tours anymore, but that's not the idea. We had somebody write in and say, well, if Zola's not going, I don't want to go. It's the land that you see, not some man you see on television every week. People stop talking to me after the first day, and uh, they're bowled over, and I do mean that. Now, uh, what, we have a crew over there now, and they have interviewed one of the premier Bible teachers, uh, Hal Lindsey. And, of course, he has a great deal to say on this and many other topics. Uh, a pretty terrific guy and one who's always made himself available to us. Always liked him, and I've always listened to him. And here he is. What was Israel like in your first few trips over here? Or what was the feeling that you had at that point in time? Well, of course, it was a dream come true. I, I came to know the Lord in 1955 as a tugboat captain. And for the first time in my life, I wanted to study something. I mean, I was a CD&F student in high school, barely got out. And I uh, went... I was in the Korean War and the Coast Guard and then became a tugboat captain. And through a series of sovereign acts of God, he reduced me from thinking I had the greatest life in the world and really having a ball living in the French Quarter in New Orleans and everything, to uh, asking the question, what's life worth living? You know, And uh, that's how I came to know the Lord. And from the beginning, uh, I was exposed to prophecy. I went back to my home in Houston, Texas. Uh, I'd been a believer maybe six months. And a friend of mine asked me to go to Rice University with him to hear uh, a man that was a great scholar and that he was going to speak on what the Suez crisis had to say about the uh, prophecies of the Bible. Well, I was fascinated by that. I said, I don't think it has anything to say about it, but I went to hear him. It turned out to be uh, Bob Thiem, Baraka Church in Houston, and uh, he spoke for about two and a half hours, and I was just absolutely uh, stunned. I, I couldn't sleep. I stayed up all night reading over my notes and checking the Bible and all that. So from that time on, I became a student, and uh, my dream was to go to Israel, but uh, I never got to go. I, I knew that Israel was central to Bible prophecy. But I didn't get to go until much, much later uh, after I wrote The Late Great Planet Earth. Uh, uh, a dear lady in San Diego had a young son uh, who was a reporter. He, had, he owned a couple of newspapers, but he was also a reporter for UPI. And so uh, she, uh, she said, look, I'm going to pay your way to go over with my son. He's been selected as one of ten people to do a, a fact-finding tour of the U.N. or when the U.N. then it was the, uh, it was the uh, European common market. And then he's going to the Middle East. And she said, uh, I know you could be a real help to him. And I uh, also was a photographer, so he, she said, you can go as his photographer. So uh, she, uh, uh, Lucille McKinnon, well, she, she was something else. She sent me with her son, and I spent a month uh, over here in 1971. And uh, that's how I got acquainted with Israel for the first time. 
And uh, right away, it was just uh, a wonderful experience. It made all the prophecies that I had been studying come alive. So you wrote Lake Great before you even came to Israel. That's right. So much of it had to do with yeah. fulfillment and so forth. And yeah, and I had written in the late great planet Earth that nothing in prophecy, as far as uh, sign of the soon coming of Christ, was relevant until 